Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I forgot to turn on my twinkle lights and just twinkle lights make everything better. So I'm going to do it. There we go. What bed doesn't have twinkle lights on it? I don't know. Not in my world. So welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. <sighs> so um, my head is swimming with teachings of Ajahn Chah. There's just a whole bunch of bits uh, floating about in there, and we'll see what tumbles out here. Um, this is prompted by uh, Tansara, who uh, was, was one of his students. Um, posted a commemorating memory on the anniversary of Ajahn Chah's death, which was yesterday, but she posted it today. Um, Ajahn Chah is a Thai forest tradition monk, Theravadan lineage, uh, who died at age 73 in 1992. And he was really instrumental in establishing Theravada Buddhism in the West, well, in the East before that, and then opening a couple monasteries in the West and um, a very important teacher for a lot of the Western Dharma teachers, Kitasara, Tanasara, um, Jack Cornfield, Ajahn. Sumedho, Ajahn Brahm, etc. And so uh, I've been, uh, pulled out a pile of his books and just reading lots of bits and pieces and seeing what what really uh, felt relevant and hopefully helpful. And um, ended up really just simmering it down to one pretty simple piece that I think is very accessible and uh, hopefully of service. Um, and it's, uh, this is in one of the collections of his Dharma talks and teachings and um, talks on daily life practice. So this is the talks that are particularly helpful for lay people such as uh, myself and perhaps yourself. <clears throat> and in this, this is a, 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 a talk he gave called Living in the World. And I'll just read his words here. Most people still don't know the essence of meditation practice. They think that walking meditation, sitting meditation, and listening to Dhamma talks are the practice. These are only the outer forms of practice. The real practice takes place when the mind encounters a sense object. That's the place to practice where sense contact occurs. So this phrase, sense doors, refers to um, the sense organs, we might call them, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, skin, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, skin, and also the mind. And in the Dharma, there's six sense doors. And this is how we know the world. This is how we experience suffering and the end of suffering is through this embodied form. And I think it was Jack Cornfield, but I couldn't find it again. This is what happened today in my meanderings. Um, in my mind, I, I made a connection with it being Jack Cornfield, but it could have been someone else that said, <laughs> recalled um, Ajahn Chah teaching about the middle path, the Eightfold Noble Path, 
and and uh, referring to it this way instead of um, what we know of as the the noble path, the the way to the ending of suffering, of wise intention and wise view and wise action, wise speech, wise livelihood, wise effort, wise meditation, wise concentration. I think I missed one in there. I know Mike, because he's thinking about it, he'll let me know. Um, so <laughs> just joking. Um, so the Middle Eightfold Path and this uh, person that had practiced with Ajahn Chah recalled Ajahn Chah offering it this way, that the middle way or the eightfold way is two eyes, two nostrils, two ears, a mouth, and touch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I thought that was pretty helpful. Of course, the eight, the whole middle path, the eightfold path, which is how we act and speak and um, the livelihood and the way we practice and our intentions, all these ways are how this form interacts with the world and is skillful with ourselves and with each other. And, and these are all boundlessly important, but just stripping it right back to these sense doors is really uh, really helpful <laughs> to just mm, when we don't know what to do or how to practice or we don't know the whole path or you know all of this dharma stuff that I'm rattling about just we all know the sense doors and this body and um, Ajahn Chah is saying here and elsewhere that um, he's saying that is the essence of meditation practice. It's not walking meditation, sitting meditation, dharma talks. These are the outer forms. The real practice, he said, takes place when the mind encounters a sense object. That's the place to practice. And then he gives an example and, and uh, this example just uh, really strikes home for, for me right now uh, because of something that occurred at, of all places, Pickleball. Someday I'll give a whole Dharma talk on Pickleball. <laughs> Clinging to Pickleball. Okay, so he says, when people say things that we don't like, there is resentment. And if they say things we like, we experience pleasure. Now, this is the place to practice. How are we going to practice with these things? This is the crucial point. If we just run around chasing after happiness and running away from suffering all the time, we can practice until the day we die and never see the Dhamma, the truth of things. When pleasure and pain arise, how are we going to use the Dhamma to be free of them? This is the point of practice. Uh, so I alluded to this incident that happened uh, on the weekend. So pickleball is usually extremely friendly and people are really supportive and lots of laughs and lots of visiting and stuff like this. <laughs> and uh, somebody said something that somebody didn't like. Uh, you know, and when people say things we don't like, there is resentment. And uh, this happened with people that didn't even know each other, just were started at each other. And it actually came to a physical altercation. Unbelievable. It's uh, like happened so quickly and so absurdly. Um, and so tragically, how quickly hearing something that we don't like could actually lead to an assault. Shocking. And also not so shocking, right? When we look at our world, 
and we see uh, the greed, hatred, and delusion pushing and pulling all of us all the time. So really uh, stripping the practice back sometimes to just seeing, oh, that's contact with, with the ear sense door. There was sound interpreted through language and then layered on with meaning and strong aversion and became an, a, a, really, a really harmful incident. But it's so subtle and so pervasive, and it's our constant experience through every day. What we see, hear, taste, touch, smell, and think. And what we do with that, instead of seeing it as its nature, arising and passing conditioned, impermanent, unsatisfactory. And it's here that we cause and create so much suffering for ourselves and each other and the world. Hmm. And this is another um, small piece here from this article. If we still don't know like and dislike as they arise, then there's there is still some concern in our minds. And if we know the truth of things, we reflect, oh, there is nothing to this feeling of liking here. It's just a feeling that arises and passes away. Dislike is nothing more, just a feeling that arises and passes away. Why make anything out of them? If we think that pleasure and pain are personal possessions, then we are in for trouble. We never get beyond the point of having some concern or other in an endless chain. This is how things are for many of us. Yeah, so it's a it's a simple teaching and uh, could be a very profound teaching. And I don't have anything else to add to it other than um, practicing with it. And as he said, you know, the formal meditation is part of the the middle way, and uh, is is this um, how did he describe it? The outer shape of the form, the outer form of practice. Uh, this is not to say it's not important. It certainly is important, essential for calming and cultivating awake awareness and compassion and wise response so that in daily life when someone says something you don't like wise response wise action wise speech is available not violence and uh, when we see something we want or don't want uh, when we feel sensations we want and don't want, all of these things can be known in their true nature and peace can still abide in our hearts. Okay. So let's practice, practice cultivating peace. Please adjust your posture as you need to feel supported and wakeful. Minimizing distractions can be helpful. You might like to turn down your lights. You could lay, you could practice laying down. You might like to turn away from the computer. Um, see if you need any adjustments with 
the temperature to feel supported with a shawl or anything like that, or a cushion. And as we're bringing attention to these sense doors or, you know, these uh, these eight points of contact with two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, mouth and skin and body touch sensations, you might without needing to necessarily look around your space, although you could if you want to, but just uh, letting in a bit of light for a few moments. If you're used to practicing with eyes closed, you might just slightly open the eyes with a soft gaze. The gaze could still be downward. And just notice how many objects are in the field of this soft gaze with the eyes resting downward. So much input, so many colors and shapes and objects with names and stories, likes and dislikes. Things we might feel unaware of or numb to, not really noticing most of the time. Things we might feel aversion to or desire for. And just see if we can just for a moment be aware of noticing these contacts with that eye sense door, free of needing anything to be other than how it is. And then if you're used to practicing with eyes closed, feel free to go ahead and rest the eyes. Allowing all the muscles around the eyes that have been so active through the day to begin to relax and the eyes settle back. And then we could gently turn attention to the ear sense door. Aware of ambient sounds or outdoor sounds or other beings in the environment or sounds from our own body, the hum of computers. And all these different vibrations are simply meeting this ear sense door. Some will be pleasant, unpleasant or neutral.
awareness, meeting, the experience of hearing. Noticing if aversion arises or clinging arises. When there's silence, some may feel aversion to me speaking or other sounds coming in. And some may feel desire when there's silence to have more speaking or guidance. Notice what it is for you. We notice the characteristic of all these sounds. Even if it sounds like a constant sound, like a hum or a vibration, it has waves in it. All these sounds, vibrations are arising and passing, conditioned and unreliable, not to be clung to, not a source of peace just known in their nature. Then we'll gently turn some attention to the nose sense door. There may or may not be sense in your environment to work with, so we'll just pause here for a shorter time. And the mouth sense door, we're not currently eating, but there may be tastes, there are tastes still in the mouth. And now gently turning towards the touch sense door. Lots of sensations here. 
So we could just begin around the top of the head or the area of the head. Just opening to whatever sensations are felt in the area of the head, face, Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Noticing if these give rise to any clinging, aversion, or spacing out. Awareness gently dropping down through the areas of neck and throat and shoulders. Noticing whatever sensations are felt in these areas. And the relationship to these sensations. Awareness, feeling the length of the arms and hands and fingers. And then letting attention gently move to the upper torso, sensations of the chest, side ribs, upper back, heart, Sensations of the middle torso, belly, waist, lower back, mid-back, ribs, lungs, diaphragm. Just noticing it as it is. There may be pleasant sensations or unpleasant or neutral. Does it give rise to any aversion or clinging?
and the low torso, hips and buttocks, belly, stomach, groin, The upper legs, Knees. Lower legs. Feet, toes, this whole body with these five sense doors. being impacted, even with eyes closed and with silence and stillness. And this is being known. And now we gently open awareness to know mind sense door. If it's helpful for you to attend to the mind sense door by having an anchor, you might choose the breath. So there's a ground of awareness on which to watch. Thoughts lifting away into planning, remembering, worrying, fantasizing, etc. Pleasant and unpleasant, desire, aversion, or spacing out.
Try not to rein your mind in tightly to an anchor, but rather just notice how the mind operates and see where it likes to go. So awareness can just watch the habits of mind. Just gently naming or noting if there's a tendency, a flavor, a habit, groove of doubting or judging, wanting, not wanting, planning, etc. These are only the outer forms of practice. The real practice takes place when the mind encounters a sense object. I might just share what uh, Tanasara wrote in her post. She says, today, January 17th, is a remembrance day of Ajahn Chah's death. She says, in my Dharma journey, he had the single most impact on me. Here I am offering him food, and uh, she shared a photo of her offering him food in Oxford, UK in 1977 during his first visit to the West. 
Deeply moved by his presence, I went to his monastery on the Mekong River in Thailand, where Ajahn Chah suggested I ordain, which I did. When Kitasaro and I left the monastery, uh, for her it was 12 years later, we first lived in Ireland. One day, we left Dublin to take a coach to Westbourne, County Mayo, where we were moving to. As we left the Dublin house, walking along the street to the coach stop, a woman came out screaming out of her house, begging us to save her son. We saw flames coming out of the roof of the house, dropped our backpacks and ran through the front door and up the stairs to get him. However, the heat was too intense and the black smoke too thick. There was nothing we or anyone could do to save him. That was January 17, 1992, the same day that Ajahn Chah died. He always taught us, get out of the burning house, which is a Buddhist analogy for samsara, meaning for the, the continued rounds of rebirth. A very painful and uh, profound experience that uh, happened for her and for that dear family. So, um, Sometimes it's really helpful to just strip our practice back, 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 back. <laughs> I really like that that piece, and and I, I apologize, I can't give the right uh, credit for it of the eightfold path being like these these eight sense doors contacting the world, and what we do with it, what we make of it. So the formal practice is the way to cultivate the awareness that can carry us through our days with skillfulness, heartfulness, awareness. May it be so. Thank you for joining us for this practice.